Hey everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to the Inbox Review. Today we've got the highly anticipated D Model Sierra Cosworth 4x4. As I said, this kit has been, oh, we've been waiting this for over a year now. I think it was supposed to come out about 12 months ago. It's been delayed for one reason or another, and it's finally hit the shops now. Carlos very kindly sent me this sample out of the Autoglass one. I've been told the Q8 one's on its way to me as well, and a fire scale paint set for it as well. A quick look through the box. The box is ram-packed full of plastic. It looks very good, uh, and I'm interested to start it, which I am going to do straight away. I'm going to build this immediately, so you'll see some updates on this very soon. Um, so like I say, Carlos very kind sent me a free sample. Thank you, buddy. It means the world. I do reference in this video about 20 times that I think it's bell kits. I'm assured it's not a bell kits kit. It does look like a bell kits kit though, which isn't a bad thing. Even the box art does. It's very reminiscent of bell kits to me, but I'm assured it's not made by bell kits. So that's it. That's what we're going to do. Like I say, this review is going up straight away. I've put it on ISM, no delay, instantly. Uh, mainly so Carlos can get the review to have a look at if he wants it. The build will be up on my Patreon on a release, and it'll be on i7 in about six weeks. That's just a delay in getting the videos out. There's a backlog of about 10 videos on there so far. Um, so if you want to see this straight away, there's links down below to becoming a patron. You get early access on the videos, exclusive videos, all the perks which I'll talk about in a minute as we get through the video. There we are. Right, let's get on with the review, and let's jump in and see what we get in the box. Okay, so here we go with the review. We've got the D model kit, Sierra Cosworth 4x4, the Sapphire, as it was known in the UK. Riley de Portugal, Francois Delacour, or uh, Mickey Bison, is it? I think it's Bison, Bayesian. I don't know. You know me, a bunch of names. Um, box art, lovely. Nice depiction of the car there. Very, very striking mobile one scheme. I've built this kit, well, I've built the Sierra Sapphire Cosworth before, but it was a terrible old, I think it was a Renaissance kit. It was awful. It was in this scheme, I did it many moons ago, and it was the most disappointing kit, one, one of the most disappointing kits I've ever built. So, this doesn't have a lot to live up to, but hopefully it'll be a good kit. On the side, picture of the real car as well. Colours needed, which Firescale does a paint set for, which I've been sent as well, which is great. On the uh, other end, it's a bit hard to see, but another depiction of the car. Box screams bell kits to me. Um, so, I don't know who is making them for D models, but I'm assuming it's Bell Kits. Uh, it is an officially licensed product as well, which is very, very, very good to see. Now, I've had a very quick look through the box. It is absolutely ram packed with stuff. Structures come in a little bag with all the decals and that. We'll look at those later on. We'll pop all that there. But there is clear sprues, and then we've got a bag of tyres, and we've got one, two, three. Four sprues and the body shell. So we'll get them all out. And we'll have a look through them all. So, let's pop these over there out of the way. There certainly is a lot in the box for the money, I'll give it that. Let me just make a little bit of room. There we go. Right then, so we'll start with the body shell. I've had a very quick look at this. And it does look really good. So it's obviously depicting a later plate, Sarah Sapphire Cosworth, because it's got the vents in the bonnet, the 4x4. Got some nice twin headlights there. So if you made a road car of this, look like I had the Moret twin headlights. It looked pretty cool. I suppose you could do that. Sand off these mountain points for the roof vents. You could do a road car. Overall, though, the body... Let's have a quick look around myself. It's pretty clean. It looks well moulded. Panel lines are good. Got nice depth to the panel lines. There, so they don't need rescribing. There is loads of meat in there. Loads. Very well defined panel lines. Shape looks spot on to me. It looks like the Sapphire Four Door Saloon Sierra. Like I said, we've got the twin headlights, those bonnet vents on the front. Very nice, very cleanly molded. Now the only thing I would say is the plastic. I do that. It does have a very rough texture, which doesn't really matter because I always scuffle my bodies up before primer anyway. But as a mold, 
it looks absolutely fantastic very very clean very clean little wisps that are just going to run over with your finger or a sander nothing bad the sierra badges are raised on the bootlet so it'd be sierra and cosworth on there so there must be a badge in the decals for it but that body shell looks absolutely fantastic top job the shape looks well it captured the shape shape of the sierra really well obviously you've got the black trim that goes at the back here that's in the body uh part of the car as well so body shell looks really really good now first sprue we have other body parts i'm not going to do any test fit today this is going to be a build i'm going to start this straight away i think but this will be a build that will go on patreon first so i'm releasing the review because obviously i am kind of um obligated for the review because i was given the review sample very kindly by carlos uh, I am no way biased. If something's no good, I will tell you. Oh, that chassis looks fantastic. Um, but I thought I'll put the review up. No delay, straight away. This is going to go as a build on my Patreon. Uh, it'll be about six weeks before you see it on ISM. So if you want to get early access to it, click on the description down below. My Patreon link is there. Loads of perks down there to make become one worth it. You get early access to all the videos as soon as they go up. Um, there's exclusive videos, how to fix things, how to do things. There's an exclusive build on there as well. There's a private uh, messenger group, a private Facebook group, a monthly live stream. Loads of reasons to perks to become a patron. And it keeps me doing these videos. This is my job. This is what I get paid for doing. Um, so if you want early access on this, you'll see it within a few days probably. If not, give it six weeks. It'll be up on ISM and you can watch it for free. So there we go. There's the spiel out of the way. So we've got the front and rear bumpers, which look very well moulded. Obviously, we don't know the fit of these until we uh, we get them on the kit itself. But we're having front and rear bumpers separate. It means there are no annoying seam lines down the back or on the body. Now, I didn't notice, actually. Let me have a little look at this, where the seam lines are, because there will be some. So they will start at the back, they'll run all the way up using the panel lines. There is zero, zero seam lines to deal with. Oh, hang on. Yes, there is. On the boot lid. We've got one just there on the very edge of the boot lid, which a minute with a sander will remove. The bootleg spoiler is going to cover it anyway. Dead easy to do. Really clean, really nice and simple to do. So that's a that's a definite top mark from me. The chassis looks absolutely wonderful. Look at that chassis. Very highly detailed. Very well done. Top marks for that. Absolutely wonderful. That is very nice. Door cards again. Nice detail. Even the B pillar where the trim goes up the seat belts. Very, very nice trim. I love it. The cockpit floor, I call them cockpits, I know it's the interior. Again, beautiful, beautiful detail. Checker plate on the floor, already in there. Very positive mounting for the seats. Nice detail at the back, absolutely lovely. Very, very nice. Nicely molded. Now, I'm not going to lie, one of the fears I had of this kit was it was going to be softly molded. And it's not bad at all, it's very crisp. And very well done. Uh, I'm always dubious in new kits, especially Fords, because it's one of my favourite cars. Um, I'm always quite dubious of them, but these look to be absolutely fantastic. Very good. We've got brake discs and calipers in one unit as usual. I'm not sure what the mounting system is for the wheels yet. We'll have a look in a bit. They look like ours rims. Are they ours rims? I think they are. We'll have a look in a bit when we get the instructions. They look like ours rims. Very well done. The mountain point in the back looks like that. So I'm assuming there's some sort of poly cap or something later on. The wheels look really good. Nicely detailed. And there's not a hint a flash. There's on the runners, but not worried about those. Very, very, very well moulded. Very well thought out where all the connection points are. They're all underneath. So top marks there. 
makes clean up a lot easier. Like I say, no seam lines on these parts at all on the front rear bumper. Don't need any cleanup. So this is going to be a fast car to get, not just in the literal sense, to get into primer. This is going to be very, very quick, but they are lovely. Very nice. I love that floor pan. The chassis it looks absolutely wonderful. Very well molded. Now, the only thing I would say is make sure you clean these screws up. It looks like, not mold release, but there's an oily substance, 100%, on the plastic. So give all this a good degrease of some airbrush cleaner, washing up liquid if you have to, but I would give everything a wipe over. But for molding, absolutely fantastic. Top marks, well done, Carlos. Top marks there, buddy. I like it a lot. Very good. Now we've got some interior parts. Oh, look at those seats. The seats look good as well. There's so many things that have been let down by some of these car kits of the Sierras and the Escorts. Because the Tamiya kits are so old. They're very basic. So they're a bit let down. But things like this, those seats, absolutely beautiful. Very, very nice. Really nice. And as James Cubejam said to me today on my live stream, no ejector pin marks on the back of the seats. Top marks for that. Very well done. Absolutely fantastic. Right, we've got differentials. We've got the front diff. Uh, dashboard. Oh, look at that dashboard. Look at that dashboard on that. Dashboard is lovely. Very, very nice. Very nice, crisply molded. We've got the protection plate from under the engine, subframe. They're the rear C-pillar uh, trim pieces. More suspension parts. That'll be the rear diff. Uh, looks like a headlight pod. Does that have, it does have headlight pods. Ooh, yes. Yeah, boy. Headlight pods. That's cool. Radiators. Or radiator with fans. Are they side skirts? Are the side skirts? Steering rack. Uh, another well thought out thing. Parts raise up. So the light pod's big. The dashboard's big. Part of the side exit exhaust is there to protect it. A raised piece of sprue, very well thought out front and side, very very well thought out. Not the strongest bit of sprue, I'll admit, but it's it's thoughtful because it does add a little bit of residual strength to the uh, the sprue. I just, yeah, it's it's sharp molding. It does have that strange texture on the plastic. I don't know if it'll show. Let me try and get on that spoiler there. It's it's almost like it's been keyed already. If you know about keying paint with paper, sandpaper or sponges, it looks like it's been keyed already. It does have a bit of a rough texture and you can feel it. But every part of the main bodywork I will run over with a 3M pad or a UMP pad. So no problem at all. Side skirts there, we've got a little bit of sink marks just there. There must be yeah, an ejector pin on the back there. So there is a little bit of a sink mark on that side skirt. I'm being very critical now because there's nothing else to point out. A little bit of an ejector pin mark on the side skirt. Um, so what it is, because the ejector pin's there on the back, it leaves a little little mark on the front there, which it's on the bottom, it's painted white. Uh, blue it'll be on this actually, won't it? You won't even see it. Uh, rear... Um, what we call it, Parsha shelf, I suppose it is, in the back. The metalwork framework for below the rear window. Rear spoiler, scuttle panel for the window wipers. Again, very nicely done. Very, very clean. Very well thought out. I like it. Very, very good. Every sprue is individually bagged as well, which is very, very good. Top marks again. Now, this will be a teller. Lots of tiny little fiddly bits. So, let me have a look. Oh, I like that. That's a neat little touch. Okay, I'm just having a quick look around. So, we've got what looks like a Sparco steering wheel. I would say that was Sparco-esque. Good new fire extinguishers. That looks like a part of the exhaust to glue on. Towing eyes. Kill switches. Very, very cool. Look at that. Kill switches. Got the gear shifter. I'm going to guess it's like a first aid box. Uh, got the rear view mirror. Sun visors. Battery box. There's the pod light covers there as well. 
I'll just scroll through these parts very slowly so you can see them. Well, there we go. We've got the steering column indicators, window wiper controls. Looks like a washer. Uh, looks like a washer. Windscreen washer Jeff bottle, to be honest. Front suspension, steering. Rear suspension. Various little bits and bobs there as well. No idea what they are. Window wipers, very, very finely done in plastic. Look at those, they're very good. Very impressive. Then we've got the accelerator pedal, footrest. But where I did spot on this sprue, where's it gone? Is these, look, headsets. How cool are they? Remember the Lancer I did, the 12 scale model for Tahira? I had some 3D printed ones made. Well, there's some 24 scale ones there, done. They look really cool. Very, very good. So, again, another nice plastic sprue. Not a hint of flash on there. Ejector pin marks. No annoying ejector pin marks on the springs that like you get on Tamiya kits. Very, very impressive. So, normally on a Tamiya kit, on like springs, there's an ejector pin mark somewhere on there. Not a thing. Not a thing. Very cool. Very, very good. So, some nice little accessories there. Yes, very, very good. Top marks. Last main sprue, then onto the clear part. So you know what I say about clear parts. Oh, they make it or break it. If it is bell kits, which I'm guessing it is, the plastic can be a little bit hit and miss on the clear parts. So we'll see. Roll cage. Wow. Okay. Very, very fine roll cage. It's like an anti roll bar there. Yeah, very, very fine. Does it have a. Wow, it's really clean as well. Very, very clean roll cage as well. Very quick clean up on, quick clean up on that. Um, got a single mirror. Have we had another mirror somewhere else, have we? Have I missed mirrors? Is there another mirror somewhere else? Am I going mad? We've got one side mirror there. <coughs> Where's the other one? Uh, it doesn't have one mirror, does it, this car? Oh, it does, of does. Okay, yeah, it does have one mirror. I stand corrected. So, one mirror. Never a fan of that. It looks, looks odd, but the real rally car has it. Roll cage looks good, though. It's very, very fine. Very, very fine. It's got a seam line across it, which they all have. A couple of seconds with a knife just running across and... There you go, it's gone. Dead simple to do. Uh, it's in four, maybe five parts, five parts in total. So a quick bit of cleanup, but they are very, very fine roll cages. Looks much more to scale than normal. It's very, very good. Okay, okay, here we go. Let's have a look at what we've got here then. Clear parts and we've got tyres next. Clear parts are what can quite often let a kid down. I am always totally honest on my reviews, always have been, always will be, and, okay, let's have a little look. Okay, I'm going to be honest, the clear is not the best. There's some more into the plastic. It's a little bit. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not as opaque, not as optically clear as it could be, but I've seen a lot worse in the past. It's very, very thin though. It is really nice and thin. But like on, I don't know if it's going to show, but it's not the cleanest of glass. You see my reflection there in my light. Look, you can see what it's like. I'd be very picky though because the rest of the kit is phenomenal clear part are difficult to get right which is why i always say it's what can make or break a kit these are in no way bad i've seen a lot worse before but yes once it's in the car you won't really notice it they're very they're, it has to be bell kits this it's got to be i've not looked where who actually makes the kit i'm going on what my assumptions were i assumed it'd be bell kits it looks just like bell kits plastic 
but they're very, very thin. Very, very thin. Good quality as well. All the brake lights are there, the spotlight uh, lenses, front indicators, the rear window with the heater matrix built into it. So while it's not perfect, the glass is more than good. More than good. It's just got a few imperfections in it, but it's so hard to get right clear glass. That would be my only gripe with the kit so far, but it is with a lot of kits. I've seen Tamiya kits with terrible glass, and this is nowhere near as bad as some of those. So, not too bad. Not the best. I've got to admit it. I'm always honest. Not the best, but more than good enough. Instructions we'll get to in a minute. We've got tyres first. So, I think these will be slick. I think this is a tarmac stage car, isn't it? Okay. Oh, we've got rubber flaps. So that's cool. Hey. The buggers to glue in place, but they always look good. So we've got mother rubber mug flaps, which is very good. We've got the poly caps. Wow, they're rubber ones as well. That's weird. Yeah, rubber poly caps for the wheels. Excuse my nails. I've been sanding white metal all morning. I've been covered in the bloody stuff. Tires, okie doke. So it's the type that are thicker at the front, thinner at the rear, so they slide over, and the wheel sits inside. They're actually quite good to be fair. There's no seam on them either. You got no real clean up. So they're gonna be just fine. Four of those are all identical. They are. Like I say, no seam. Give them a scuff up with a sanding pad. Again, nice and quick. Well thought out, very well thought out kit. Plastic is good. The molds are absolutely fantastic. Body looks spot on. Beautiful detail on the kit. Really, really, really nice. Very, very good. So, we've got a bag of goodies now. So, we've got decals, mass sets, top marks for the mass sets. Nice. There you go. Nice, simple mass sets for the front, rear, and side windows. Okay, what's the mass set for? What are they for? Don't want to open that if we can help it. We've got some. Um, Reflective material, one for the interior mirror. I'm not sure what the others are. We'll look through the instructions. We've got a metal piece of wire for an antenna. Again, nice inclusion in the kit. We've got some 2 mil seatbelt material. Never a fan of 2 mil. I always think 3 mil looks better in cars. But 24, I think 2 mil looks a bit anemic. But comes with it anyway, so very important. And then photo edge, so we've got groove discs. Let's take this out. We've got groove discs. Very cool. We've got grills. They must be seat mount points, I think. Seat belts. Ah. There's the badges there. Look, the Sierra badges and the Cosworth are in photo edge at the top. Middle. Very cool. These will be our roof vents, seat belt buckles, bonnet release pins. Very, very nice set of PE there. Very nice to come with the kit. The Sierra and the Cosworth badges look absolutely spot on to me. Period correct of the black raised plastic with silver writing. So, pretty easy enough to paint those as well. There's no decal. Paint them all black, and then get a sander and run it over the raised area. That'd be perfect. But yeah, nice PE, very very nice decals. Okay, now no idea who prints the decals. Again, they look very bell kits like to me. Let's have a little look around them before we say anything. So let me zoom in a touch so you can see. Okay, so we've got the Michelin markings, the Autoglass markings, Mobile One. Got the four badges. Does it have any Cosworth badges to go over that white metal um, photo etch? No. Okay, no problem. So, some nice decals on there. Right, okay, let's start down here. So, we've got the seat belts and decals if you don't use the photo etch. Which use the photo as you can, it's much better. The Oz Racing uh, for Motorsport 
uh, decals for the wheels there as well. Michelin tyre markings. We've got the rally computer, the first A kit decal, uh, instrument decals there as well for the speedo and whatnot. Just click that to focus. There we go. We've got the back end for the seats and the carbon composites, which is very good. Recaro markings, which I'm sure are for the seats, the Michelin markings. Mobile One, looks like a heat shield decal. Four logos, the um, twin headlight infill for one of the headlights there as well. Driver markings there as well. Auto glass, car glass, depending on which driver you go for. The trim, I think that's for the front and rear bumpers. The side trim for the sides, which I'll be painting, but I'll probably use that decal over the top. I think that would be easier to do. To be fair, they look like good decals. They're nice and satin. They don't feel too thick. And they look great. They all seem to be in register. Which means when it's had its multiple layers printed on, it's not moved. Everything's clear, crisp. The decals look really good. You've got the Ford Motorcraft there, Bill Stein. Very good. Decals look really, really good. Like I said, I'm going to build this straight away, so hopefully we'll get the decals quite quick. Get this thing painted up. I'll put some pictures on Facebook. Like I say, the build will be out in about six weeks. If you want to come and watch it early, you become a patron down below. Um, if not, click on my Paul SM Facebook page down below in the description, and I'll put updates on there regularly when I go through it. So, there we go. That's the kit looked at. Let's grab the instructions. And have a little look at those. Let me just put, I hate leaving decals out. I'm always paranoid of spilling a drink on them or something stupid. So let's pop all those bits back in there. And we'll seal that bugger back up. There we go. Right, instructions, the last part. And then we've got paint to look at as well. So instructions again, bell kits, just what they come in. We've got a picture of the box art there. Very cool. Some info on the car there. If you want to read it, you can pause it and have a little look. I'm not going to read all that out. And then it's a nice thick book. Colour callouts on the front page there. As you can see, tools required, how to apply decals, the legend uh, markings or icon definitions they call it. So cut the scissors, make two pieces, don't glue, blah, 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 etc, etc. All your painter there that you need. Uh, they've listed fire scale and zero. Fair play. Fair play, that's good. TS colours are there. Normal X's. Uh, would have been nice CLPs. I think I'd have preferred to CLPs in there, but... Ivory gloss, LP39. Oh, racing white, you mean. That's a bit strange. But there we go, so there we go. Oh, yeah. Wow, they are big instructions. But they are very clear. Very, very clear. They're huge drawings. How good are they? Wow. You can certainly see all the parts go there. There's no missing that, is there? So, starting off with the uh, chassis. Start with the front rear suspension, uh, steering rack, the front gearbox, transfer box, rear subframes. Rear differential, my compressors come on, sorry about that peeps. We've got the front subframe, some painting icons there for the colours to do, rear suspension, discs, so you can either paint these or use the photo etch, always use the photo etch, scuff it up a little bit and it'll look great, putting those in place so the polycaps go in there. Wheels go through, so it's just a bigger polycap system, really, isn't it? With that rubber polycap, make sure you put them in before you glue your discs and calipers in place. Make sure you get these all orientated around the correct way. Wheels and tires with the brake uh, turbo fans on there as well. Did they show them on the box? It didn't, did it? Don't think so. No, it didn't, but you got the option to put them on. Okay, so yeah, the turbo fans are there, putting the wheels in place. Then we're on to the interior. Very, very nice. Got individual painting um, and part layout for all the smaller components in the vehicle. 
roll cage again individual painting of it the rear partial shelf section all goes in as one okay so does that have to be done like that i like to leave the roll cage out i always like to build it up spare the roll cage separately but i suppose it could be glued to that it's going to be the same color okay that's cool seats seat to there the headsets very nice little touch Seat belts, pop them in. There's soon to be some instructions in there for the seat belt assembly. Seats look really good though. Very impressed with those seats. I don't know if the T is referring to decals or photo etch. It must be photo etch. So there's how to assemble your belt as well. Obviously you've got the decal on the back of the seat. Uh, the dashboard with a nice big picture on how to detail up. So you get your decal options. Decals are in the circles there. So they must be photo etch, as you're saying. All the decals, as we can point out. Nice big pictures. A nice uh, handy for detail and stuff. You can see where everything goes properly. Steering column in. Kill switch. The rally computer. Top half of the roll cage with the sun visors in place. The jack. Gear shifter. Pedal box. Dashboard going in. The um, door panels are going in place, the wiper scuttle panel, the roof vents, door handles are separate unit as well. Should be black on this, the door handles. No, they're colour coded. Um, the rear C uh, pillar vents on the back as well. Windscreen, all the glass goes in from the outside. I kind of like this, but I kind of don't as well. It can be tricky to go in place. Um, you need some Bob Smiths, uh, odorless. Um, super good and a steady hand for doing this um, so I would suggest on a kit like this that's new, test fit the glasses see how it fits, somebody did say it sits proud, I don't know how that's going to be, I'll have a look at that later front lights assembly so we've got the front indicators we've got the lens unit itself and the front lens the morette or the twin headlights on this don't know who makes them um, with the lens and the blank plate in, we've got a hole in the back, uh, top of the roof for the antenna. Which again, looks good. Rear lights, the rear badges, which stick on as we saw earlier, so we have to paint those up. Painting for them with the clear reds and yellows. Drilling holes in the front, and then popping the chassis on, popping on the the body now, the front and rear bumper is going to have to stay off until I think they are, aren't they? We're going to have to paint and detail all uh, leave the front bumpers off till the end. Hmm. We can whip the chassis on and have a look at that, and maybe test fit the bumpers and see how they'll fit. What about the side skirt? Are they going to stay off as well? Yes, apparently they have. Okay. Okay, duck. If we have to do that, we do that. We've got some more drill marks to do. Front grills from the photo I set we saw earlier. Uh, towing eyes, more holes to drill. The skip panel protection underneath the exhaust. The differential cover that one, not an exhaust part. Very good. Mud flaps, spotlights. I think the pod is going to have to go on this one, I think. Yeah, I think we'll have to put the headlight pod on there. Yes, I think we will. I think it'll look too good without it. Extra front headlight alignment. Yep, prop that in place. You've got to drill the hole. So that's a good secure mounting point because the Tamiya ones never had a hole. They kind of hovered on. Um, but once you drill the hole, you're committed to keeping them on. So the other way to do it is you could cut the mounting points off and magnetise it. And the way I've done that is put a magnet in the light unit or under the, the bonnet itself and then put something metal and then you can stick it on. That does work. Whether we're going to actually commit to using those lights, I don't know. I may do, I may not. Got wipers, antenna, rear spoiler, side mirror. Completed. Sprue layout, always an important part. Always an important part to show. Definitely. Good sprue out there, good amount of parts in the kit, there really is. And then the uh, side profiles and the front, oh, I like that, you see, 
See, not every kid gives you two profiles. It doesn't just give you one side. It's really annoying because to see a mirrored decal sometimes, it's nice to actually see it and see which way it goes round. So top marks are again, putting both in there. Yes, very good. Striking scheme on this one. It is an iconic car. And then top view, which again, no overview gives. Front rear. And a front rear on the different car as well. Is it? What's different? I can't figure out what it's doing. Oh, it's showing us where the uh, four badges go, is it? So, very good. There we go. That's the kit instructions. Nice instructions. I like those. I also have the paint set from Firescale, so I think we'll be using these. I do like the packaging on the Firescale paint, it is very good. You get a little pipette in there, which holds about, I don't know, a mouse's fart of paint. Uh, we've got the white. We've got the orangey red. Is that the right colour? I thought it was more of a red on this. Hmm. Okay, and the blue as well. So... I don't think we'll be painting the red, but we'll definitely be using the blue and the white. I think we'll go with the decal for red. I think it'd be easier to use. Uh, I've used these before. They're not bad paints. Um, and we'll certainly give them a whirl on this uh, and see how they get on. But nice paint set. Three pipettes in there. One for each colour, which is good. Good packaging as well. It is nice packaging on these. Uh, and like I say, we'll use those two colours. Not sure about the red. It looks a bit orangey to me. Hmm. Where is the colour? Does it have a colour on it? No. No colour, but we'll see. We can always do a test piece and see what our spray is like. There we go, there's the kit. Let's go back to me. Some final thoughts. There we go then. Ho ho! Looks very good. Very impressed. Very impressed. I always have my doubts over any of these Ford or BMW models that they're going to be let down somewhere. And not with this one. It looks absolutely fantastic. With the addition of the photo etch, the belts, the antennas, the mass sets, you've got the complete kit there in the box. The moulding's wonderful. No seam lines to deal with. Well, one on the boot lid of the uh, main body. Getting this to paint will be very quick. Whether we're going to have to leave the front rear bumpers off and side skirts for assembly, I think we might have to on this one. Just means painting them all separately, which is a little bit of a pain sometimes. Not the end of the world. Moulding looks great. It's very crisp, very clean. A little bit of a strange texture on the plastic, but I always scuff all them up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. My only criticism is the clear parts, and I'm going to be completely honest because I always am. Clear parts are hard to do on model kits. They are, and even Tamiya doesn't get them right every time. They're not bad. They're just not perfect. It's not as good as the rest of the kit is what I'm going to say. That's the kindest way I can say it. It's not going to flaw the kit. It's not going to make any issues. Um, it's just being overcritical of the kit because there's nothing else to nitpick. The rest of it is brilliant. Great instructions as well. They're very, very clear and concise. Lovely big pictures. Uh, and the colour call out at the back, perfect. Up, uh, top down, side, both sides, front, rear. You couldn't ask for more on a colour call out or decal sheet. And decals look high quality as well. So, Top marks. Now, I believe this kit is around the £55 mark. Shop around where you can get it from. Whether it's in stock is lucky if you get it. That's it. It's just if it's in stock. I know a few places went on pre-order. I think they sold out already. So, if you want one, have a look around. Try and grab it if you can. If you're over in Europe, go and look on D-Model uh, Kits itself. I think you can buy direct from them. Um, I think this is going to be a decent kit. The proof is in the pudding. So, like I say, I'm going to start it probably tomorrow now, and uh, we'll see how it all fits together. And fingers crossed, we finally get a good share of Sapphire model kits because the Renaissance one that's out there is crap. The Renaissance one is terrible. It's not a nice resin kit at all. I built it. Um, so yeah, excited to start this one. And uh, just like to thank Carlos again. Thank you very much for the review sample, buddy, uh, and the paint as well. Thank you, mate. He's very kind, very generous bloke. And a really nice guy to chat to as well. And we've got some very exciting projects in the future. I think there's Mitsubishi Evolution coming out. Um, and two WRC Escort Cosworths, which is very interesting to see as well. Uh, looking forward to those. So, there we go. Go get one of these kits. And if you're building it, let me know in the comments down below what you think of it so far. And like I say, I should have some updates on my Paul ISM page. It's linked down below in a few days. You can see. Come and have a look. 
And uh, as always, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, uh, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you've got any comments about the, uh, the review as well. And there's links down below from everything from ISM, the forum, umpretail.com, my Paul ISM page, my scale mates, patron, everything's down there. Go and have a look, and I will catch you next time. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.